Welcome back to Android Q&A. My name is Jace, and this is where we try and answer your most pressing Android questions. Like, why is it that Google makes Android open source? And better yet, what does open source even mean when the licensing costs for manufacturers can be crippling? That's sort of like saying, sure, you can date my beautiful daughter. I'm just going to castrate you first. Now, first off, let's clear up one of the major misconceptions when it comes to Android and open source. Most people tend to believe that although Android is free to use and install, manufacturers have to pay Mother Google a licensing fee. Turns out, not exactly true. You see, if you and I want to install Android on any of our compatible devices, we can do that free of charge, no problem. But when a manufacturer wants to sell Android-powered devices to the masses, they must get licensed by Mother Google if they want to use Google mobile services. That's Gmail, Google Play Store, and Google Maps, etc. Now, to get that certification, they don't have to pay anything to Google, but they must get uh, certified or tested by Google-recognized third-party testers. And that can be expensive. Anywhere from forty dollars to $70,000 for every 100,000 devices. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. So now that we've clarified that Google doesn't make money off licensing Android, how do they make their money? Well, with over a billion downloads of Android or installations of Android, they are able to get a much farther reach, making it open source and free. And it goes back to Google's fundamental business model, search ads. And with all our use of Google Play Store, Google Maps, Gmail, Google Keep, you name it, they have lots of relevant data on our lives. What we buy, what we watch, where we go, who we do it with. They are then able to give us or deliver us targeted ads that are relevant to the things we care about. That's how Google has made a gazillion dollars. Now, the next question is one that I've answered multiple times before, and some of you are going to be sick of this, but it was one of the most popular questions recently in the forums, and that was, should I get a phone and a tablet or just get an all-in-one option and buy a phablet? So now it's time to take stock of how you actually use your device. Not how you think you use it, but how you actually use it on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, women in my family, for example, my wife and my daughter, they're pretty casual users. So they use their phone to text, call, play Candy Crush and Facebook. And that's really about it. And that is the vast majority of Android users. However, if you are watching this video, you have passed the threshold of being an Android geek. And if you can afford it, you really want one of both. When I first started out, I bought a phablet, the Note 1, and it was fantastic for a time, but after a while it just was not meeting my needs. So if you're doing a lot of media consumption and you're not just using your phone casual like most people do, get both if you can. Buy a phone now, save up for a tablet, let me know what you think. Now the third question is, can I get Google Now to work on my desktop? If you use Google Now on your mobile device, you can see certain Now cards on your desktop computer if you're signed into Chrome, including weather, sports scores, commute traffic, and even reminder cards. Some of these cards may be based on the location of your mobile device. Google Now on Chrome shows a subset of Now cards you can see on your mobile device, which uses your device's location. You can edit your location settings by going to Location Reporting and Location History on your Android or iOS device at any time. Now here's a big one. How do I choose the best antivirus app for my Android device? Well, the short answer is you don't. Android has enough security built into it to protect you from the most common tasks that you will do. The danger comes in when you one root, which technically does increase the vulnerability of your device, at least to some measure, but the most common risk is when you go to non-Google Play Store sites to download apps. Uh, China has some common ones. You don't want to go there. You are running a risk to uh, really corrupting your device, so don't do that. All right, this is where I normally say thank you for watching Android Army and connect with me here and Android Brothers over there, but I'm not going to say that today. What I'm going to say is that I have put in some hard, freaking hard clues into these Android Q&A shows before, and uh, those of you who got the clues and were able to answer it uh, got a t-shirt or a, a Google Play card, gift card. Uh, but clearly those questions were way too easy. Here I thought they were hard. 
Uh, here's an example. I put a tiny, tiny, tiny little clue in a tiny, tiny, tiny part of the screen for one frame. That's a half a second. And people got the clue 16 minutes after the video was published early on a Sunday morning. Clearly way too easy. So I am taking this to a whole other level. For the next four Q&As, count them four, there will be a clue, tiny, tiny little misleading, screwed up crazy clue that will lead to one fundamental question or the answer to one question. And that question is, what is the next big leap forward? I mean, 2007, the iPhone came out and boom, smartphones exploded. What's the next big leap forward? You can't just say, oh, wearables, because that's an obvious one, right? Or Android One or something. I'm looking for an idea, not just a word, but an idea. And it will start to shape as, as we go through these next four Q and A's. So the clue has already been in this video or it will be, or it is right now, you don't know, but it's somewhere and there'll be at least one clue in all of the next four Q and A's. Good luck. What will be the next big leap forward? See you later on Android Q and A.